So our lesson is history with reference to Patanjali Yoga Sutra. In between we came across mantra. Can you say with me? Asatoma Satgamaya. You can see the text. Asatoma Satgamaya. Now what it means? It means movement from unreal to real. You know, our masters, our great masters, why I always use the masters all the time? Because the knowledge coming from there, those masters. You know, I may write, I may write hundred of books on yoga. Still the knowledge comes from the masters. Right? Yeah. So we should always move with the humility. So they use the different words. They use different words at different time to make the things understand easily. So when they use the word unreal from real, it is the same that we have understood. Can you remember? What is that? Essential and non-essential. So real, real self is the essential nature and unreal is the non-essential nature. Did you understand that? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you see that? They define yoga. How they define yoga? They say, when I work on my life, and I move from unreal to real, I reach to the highest state of yoga. My picture is not coming clear? It's blurry? Um, it's a little blurry, but we can still see it. I'm... Yeah, you can still it's see it. I don't know why it is happening. Uh, let us just wait. Can I remain as it is. Don't do anything. Yes, now it is clear. <laughs> so now, Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya. Can you say Tamaso Jyotirgamaya? Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya. Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya. So, as we understand and discussed earlier, our masters uses different words and phrases to explain the same thing again and again. So, tamas means darkness, jyoti means light. So, moving from the darkness to light is yoga. How it can be yoga? If I move from dark room to sunlit room, is it yoga? No. No, yes, obviously no. So, they use symbols. Darkness means ignorance. I don't know my real nature. That is the meaning of darkness. Darkness means ignorance. Ignorance means I don't know my real nature. When you say I am upset, do you know your real nature? No. Being upset is your false nature. 
you are stressed it is your false nature and light means wisdom knowledge so when you have a right knowledge of your true nature that is the meaning of moving from darkness to light <clears throat> right now the third point mrityo rama amritangamaya mrityo rama amritangamaya one more time you have to sing you know as if i have reached there mrityo rama amritangamaya so there are many meanings of these two words i will take one symbolic meaning today so mrityu means mrityu means death and amrit means immortality mortality and immortality huh? do you understand these two words yes yeah. huh? the one that dies and the other that never dies so what is the message here our real nature is immortal our real nature never dies can i give you can you give me one example of anything in the world outside that you feel every day that never changes that never dies no it is present all around your body it is here and now it is present all around your body <laughs> think of it knowledge no it is space <laughs> <laughs> you see that the space is already present all around now take an example of a glass the space inside the glass and the space outside the glass are there two spaces or one space there is one space that can separate one space separated falsely it is one space <clears throat> you need not to break the glass to have a one space it is already one space there is a agricultural land space is there you build a house the space remains as it is space never changes space never dies just just tell me if it if it changes its shape no the wall is erected in between the space but the space inside and outside is the same it is only one similarly our essential nature never dies so yoga teaches us how to discover that immortality in us essential nature means immortality in other word essential nature true nature ah is the same thing that is immortality it never dies it never changes when i say permanent peace and happiness it means that never changes it never dies now you need to ask yourself <clears throat> what you need to ask yourself should i do the practice of yoga to reach to that state of my essential nature i must discover my essential nature in my present life 
while doing everything. <clears throat> you do everything outside. You study, go to school. Uh, you study, you get a job, you earn money, you marry, you do everything outside. But inside, you have to continue to work in your life to find your essential nature. So it means the journey of yoga leads to permanent state of peace and happiness. So understand that this is like that we have to find that essential nature inside. Now tell me one thing more. There is a sugar cube, right? Where is the sweetness in the sugar cube? On one side or the other side or everywhere? Everywhere. everywhere. It is everywhere. Perfectly right. Similarly, similarly, our essential nature is present everywhere. Means what? It is present in the body, but not the body. What it means? I'm giving you a very higher knowledge in today's lesson. You both are intelligent. What did I say? It is present in the body, but not the body. Did I understand? It is present in the sugar cube, but it is not the sugar cube. You understand? It is not the sugar cube. The sweetness is not the sugar cube, but it is already present there. Are you getting it? Yes. So it means it is present in the body, but not the body. It is present in the breath, but not the breath. It is present in the mind, but not the mind. It is present in the intellect, but not the intellect. It is. The cream is in the milk, but we don't see it until we work on the milk, we churn the milk. Then what happens? Then we find the butter there. Right? But if you buy a milk, do you see the butter? No. no. Similarly, we don't see the essential nature until we practice yoga. We churn this body and the mind and the intellect and the ego with lot of practices until we discover our essential nature. Are you getting it? Yes. Did you understand? The way Sugar cube is not sweet. Now sugar, sweetness is present in the sugar cube, but it is not the cube. Similarly, essential nature is present in the body, but it is not. It is present in the breath, but it is not. It is present in the milk, but it is not the milk. Are you understanding? Yes. So whenever anyone asks you and whatever you are learning today and if you give a class based on what we learned until today, nobody is going to raise any doubt that you don't know what is real yoga. Clear? Yes. Go ahead, let us move ahead. So the entire journey of yoga is to become a good person. And what is that good person in you? It is your essential nature. It is your essential nature. So when we discover essential nature, we start living into that essential nature. We have already achieved the highest state of yoga. What is the highest state of yoga? It is Samadhi. 
we have already understood the highest state of mindfulness or samadhi is the highest state of yoga. Clear? Yeah. Understood? No problem? Yes, let us go ahead. So, on the next, I have written, so great, this Patanjali was a great master, was a genius. You know, when someone is a great, has a great intellect, is a genius, huh? we normally give simile, metaphor. Uh, if I say that you are like Edison, so means that you are a great genius. Uh, I may say you are like Einstein. Uh, I may say you are like Madame Curie. You know who is Madame Curie? Who discovered radium? Who discovered, who did many experiments and he, she was a great scientist. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Madame Curie, Einstein, Edison. Similarly, Patanjali was a great master. He had a very deep knowledge of yoga and he has a very deep knowledge of herbs, plants that can help manage many illnesses. And that herbal science is known as Ayurveda. Have you heard the way of term Ayurveda? Yeah. So he was a great physician too. He was a master of yoga. And he was a great grammarian. He was a master of the Sanskrit grammar. You know the English teacher teaches us grammar? Yeah. Similarly, he was a great master of the grammar of the Sanskrit language. Yes. So, because he was a genius, that is why we say we salute that great master. Why he is a great master? If you see that, how do we understand Patanjali Yoga Sutra? Patanjali has written principles and practices of yoga in a compressed form. We should now know how to unzip the sutra. That I will take up later. Many masters written commentaries on Yoga Sutra. It is only the master who practice these sutras can help us understand the sutra. I discussed about this that if you don't know how to open the un how to open the JIF file, then you don't know what lies inside. Huh? The sutras are like a compressed file, compressed knowledge, like H2O. So if we don't have a basic understanding of chemistry, we do not know H2O means water. So there was another master, Vyasa, named Vyasa, who has written a commentary on Yoga Sutra. What he, what it means by writing a commentary? That he has opened those sutras to help us understand what exactly is yoga. Clear? Yeah. Hmm? The way I am opening up the brief history of yoga, same way the Vyasa, another great master, who has written a commentary on each sutra. Why he has written commentary on each sutra? To help us understand, to help us practice. There was another master, Bhoja, who has also written a, a commentary, critical commentary on these sutras. I have already explained in briefly, what is Eastern wisdom in a different way? Just read it and see that if you have understood what is Eastern wisdom that is also known as Darshan. Eastern wisdom known as Darshan. 
So, what you are studying the Eastern wisdom is 6,000 years old. We have 3,000 teachers and the text. Now understand this part also clearly, this, this statement. Who is the author of science? Can you tell me who is the author of the science? There is none. Huh? There is none. There is none? No, there are thousands of scientists who are the authors of the science. Not only one scientist. Einstein, Edison, Curie. Yeah? There is a long list in modern psychology. There are 300 psychologists. There are more than 200 physicists, chemists, researchers. So, what it means? There is not a single person who is the author of the science. Yeah? Did you understand? There are many authors of the science. Similarly, there are many great masters who are the author of Eastern Wisdom and Yoga. You got it? Yes. So, Patanjali is a codifier of Yoga. Patanjali is not the originator of Yoga. What is the codified? He codified the knowledge into sutras. Uh, there are many scientists in the field of chemistry who say who discover who says that okay, who create discovered. Let H represents the hydrogen element. Let H2 represents two atoms of hydrogen. Similarly, there are many masters of yoga during the period of 6,000 years who have written the principles and codified by Patanjali, summarized by Patanjali. That is what is known as huh? So, you have to remember, you should write down, the Patanjali is not the originator of yoga. Patanjali is a codifier. Patanjali is a codifier who compressed the knowledge of yoga into sutra. Are you clear? Yes. Uh -huh. Did you understand? Yes. Yeah. Say that, you know, the knowledge of the science is already there. Say, for example, Newton's law of motion. Huh? Have you studied that Newton's law of motion? Electricity, sound, principles of sound and electricity is already available there. You know? Our scientists have discovered that. And if I write a book on that, and the book becomes very famous, it does not mean that I am the originator of knowledge. Right? Similarly, many masters already know the knowledge of yoga. What Patanjali did? Patanjali summarized that knowledge, codified that knowledge. Did you understand that part? He summarized that knowledge and presented to us for easy and complete understanding. Mm -hmm. Do you see me? Yes. Okay. How do you see me? Through my eyes. Through your eyes. If the mind is not there behind your eyes, can you see me? No. So it is the mind that is seen. Mm -hmm. huh? It is the mind going, coming out through the eyes. Then only you can see. Are you understanding that? Uh-huh. 
and what is behind the mind, our essential nature. <laughs> So when you see a thing, an object, directly, without the help of your eyes and the mind, that is known as darshan, that is known as perception, that is known as direct perception. So again, how do you see me? through the mind, through the eyes, but without mind you cannot see. If the mind is not there behind the mind, behind your eyes. Clear? Yes. So the mind is looking at me through your eyes. Through your eyes means indirectly the mind is seeing your mind is looking at me, seeing at me indirectly through your eyes. Are you understanding? Yes. It is not very difficult. So when we see our true nature without the help of the eyes in the mind, that is known as darshan. Uh, understand in a different way. Uh, through your eyes, can you see the stars? Mm, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. some of the stars. But can you see all, all the galaxy? No. You have to use electron. No, you have to use telescope. Right? Yes. But with the telescope, you increase the range of your eye. Can you see coronavirus? Yeah. <laughs> but still, we all are scared of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we can definitely see coronavirus through electron microscope. Right? Yes. I cannot see my real nature through my naked eyes, through my mind. Similarly, I have to use a very higher faculty to see my true nature. What is that instrument? I am recording it. You have to listen to it again and again. Once you understand today's talk and you assimilate into your intellect, you will see yourself becoming a great yoga teacher. So what did I say? In order to see the star, I have to use a special instrument that is telescope, right? In order to see that crazy coronavirus, I have to use electron microscope, right? I have to, in order to see my essential nature, I have to use a special instrument of knowledge. What is that instrument of knowledge? That is yoga. That is why we practice yoga. That is why we have chanted the mantra, Satoma Satgamaya. Are you understanding? Yes. Are you getting it? So we need a special instrument to see the stars. We need a special instrument to see coronavirus or any cell. Similarly, we need a special instrument to see our essential nature. What is that special instrument of knowledge? Yoga. What yoga includes? Mantra, asana, yama, niyama, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, samadhi, mindfulness, lot of practices. 
they act as an instrument of knowledge. Are you getting it? Uh -huh. uh, we are learning very higher knowledge of yoga. That is known as darshan. Are you clear? Yes. Again, I am repeating. We need a special instrument to see the stars in the galaxies in the sky. It cannot be seen by the naked eyes. Right? So if someone asks you, okay, you, I agree with you that there is an essential nature. Show me. What is your answer? Don't get upset. You need a special instrument. You tell them that, can you show me the galaxy and the stars and during the daylight? No. But uh, if you cannot show me with the naked eyes, does that mean that the stars do not exist? No. So I have to use the special instrument. So if someone says, show me your essential nature, mm -hmm. show me your essential nature, tell them, use the special instrument. That is yoga. You have to practice yoga. You have to practice yoga to see the true nature. Are you clear? Yes. Hold on. Can I just transfer you to my headphones really quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, see that. Did you understand that part clearly? Very good. So, if you have understood that part, so come to the page number four. We will start understanding the sutras. I'll send you the digital audio files for you to read it again, uh, to listen to it again so that then you prepare a summary of it, what you have understood and send it to me. That will make the things clear. And if there is any addition into your summary, I will add that and resend to you. Okay. So now comes, we come to the first sutra. Now understand a little the difference between a chemistry formula and also the formula written by Patanjali. So, Patanjali has written these sutras. They are one-liner. One-liner. And the chemistry formulas, they appear like acronym. Acronym. Well, I say H2O. Acronym. Two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen. H2SO4. Uh, we say sulfuric acid. What is the formula of salt? NaCl, sodium chloride. Similarly, now one liner. The first sutra is Ath Yoga Nushashanam. So there are three words, or we can say four. Ath. Can you say after me, Ath, Yoga, Yoga, Anu, Anushashanam, Anushashanam, Ath Yoga Anushashanam, Ath Yoga Anushashanam. Can you say it loudly, Ath Yoga Anushashanam, Ath Yoga Anushashanam. Atha Yoga Nushashanam with a smile on the face. <laughs> Atha Yoga Nushashanam. Atha Yoga Anu. Yo, oh. ah, so, first Yo, word is Atha Yoga. Atha Yoga Anu. Anu Shashanam. 
द सिंपल मीनिंग ऑफ अथ योग अनुशासनम इज नाव पतंजलि सेज व्हाट पतंजलि सेइंग व्हाट द मास्टर इज सेइंग नाव आई एम स्टार्टिंग द डिसिप्लिन एंड द टीचिंग ऑफ द ट्रेडिशन ऑफ योगा फ्रॉम ए टू जी total discipline everything all the knowledge the entire body of the knowledge patanjali says i am going to teach in this yog sutra okay understand first sutra yeah Yeah. Do you have a driving license? No. No, you don't have. You have it? I do. You do have. So what it takes to have a driving license? You pass the written examination. Mm -hmm. What written examination says there are rules of the road. Practical examination you have the skill set of driving. Huh? you understand the terms the steering the brake and the paddle and the lot of other step the wheels how to maintain that so once you pass the written and the practical examination then you are qualified driver and you can easily get a driving license right mm -hmm. so more or less you have a total knowledge that's why that's how you can drive the car on the road similarly in the first sutra patanjali says i am presenting the entire body of knowledge of yoga that includes physical practices breathing meditation uh philosophy and pra different practices principles the rules on the road the principles the practices entire body of knowledge has been written by the master patanjali in his book that is known as yog sutra did you understand the first sutra mm -hmm. but there is one more word you cannot say that i don't have any interest in driving and still you start learning driving and you drive you have to be a seeker you should desire that now i want to be a driver of the car right so there is a word you say ath yoga anushasanam so in sanskrit the ath means now i am a seeker of yoga if i don't desire to find my true nature if i don't want permanent peace and happiness in my life is yoga for me no can you say that you know can you i don't want to feel sweetness give me a candy not possible <laughs> not possible see that? so we should keep in our mind that yoga is a journey to permanent peace and happiness and patanjali is presenting the entire body of the knowledge of yoga now coming to the second sutra what is the definition of yoga according to patanjali there are many definitions of yoga hmm? many definitions of the same thing you know sometime uh, you are you are called by your name sometime your dad says cutie come on sometimes they say honey yeah you see yeah. that they use the different words similarly we have different definitions of yoga 
one definition by Patanjali. Yoga chitta vratti nirodha. Three words, yo, four words. Yoga chitta, chitta vratti nirodha. Yoga chitta vratti nirodha. Let us say it in a simply in a simple formulation. Yoga. Yoga. Chitta. Chitta. Vratti. Vratti. Nirodha. Nirodha. Yoga. Yoga. Chitta. Chitta. Vratti. Vratti. Nirodha. Nirodha. We have all used the term. We have understood chitta. Chitta means the mind. We have already understood vritti in the beginning, all the thoughts and thought patterns. We have already understood the word nirodha means empty and yoga. So yoga, chitta, mind, vritti, thoughts, nirodha, empty. So now you can make out the understanding. Yoga is emptying the mind of its contents. Yoga is emptying the mind of its contents. I gave you an example of a living room. Do you remember? Yes. Yes. You emptied all the stuff. Empty all the stuff and then reorganize. And then you throw out which is not required. Isn't it? You also yes. clean it, you sweep it, you huh? You you clean it from the dust. Isn't it? Before you reorganize the things, yoga is same thing if you see the mental, my mind is a living room. It is full of lot of garbage and Craziness. That is why I become upset. That is why I become stressed. That is why I have strong likes and dislikes. That is why I fight. That is why I react. So we throw out what is not required. We make our mind empty. When you make your mind empty, that becomes yoga. Clear? Yes. You understand? Empty mm -hmm. the mind of its contents. Contents here means the thoughts. Mm -hmm. And when you empty the mind of its contents, it becomes yoga. So here, yoga is known as the highest state of meditation. So meditation means empty the mind of its thought pattern. That becomes yoga. So before we go there, go to the third sutra on the page number five. Then we will understand the other part. So what where happens when we empty the mind uh, from its thought pattern? Now say, take an example that uh, your, your mind says that I don't like this guy. I hate this guy, right? You have this thought, right? Now if you remove that thought from your mind, if you remove that thought from your mind, simple. I'm asking you a simple question. Uh, you hate someone. So where that uh, thought is there? In the mind. So if you remove that thought and that person comes in front of you, will the mind have a feeling of hatred? You have already removed the thought. So you are not harming yourself, but you also prevent yourself from reaction. You know? 
So we should refrain from saying and expressing, I hate you. No. We should keep a distance if we don't like a person. You understand? That will help you to keep your mind calm. Are you getting it? Or are you feeling bored? Understand. 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 Yeah? So what happens when you empty the mind like this? The one I gave one example. So when you empty the mind like this, what happens? That in that emptiness of the mind, your real nature is seen. You see your real nature, your true nature. So the moment you see your true nature, you are filled with the permanent peace and happiness, love and wisdom. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. That is the meaning of the third sutra. Tada. Can you say Tada? Tada. Drashtu. Drashtu. Swarupe. Swarupe. Avasthanam. Avasthanam. Tada Drashtu. Swarupe Avasthanam So the third sutra means the first sutra. Do you remember what is the first sutra? In the first sutra, Patanjali says, If you are a seeker, I will give you the entire knowledge of yoga from A to G. In the second sutra, he defines yoga. What he says, yoga is empty the mind from its thought pattern. I gave you one example. You know, normally we say to our even friends and even in their family, I hate you. So if that thought is removed from the mind, and the same person comes in front of you that there is no hatred? Will there be hatred? No, because mm -hmm. thought is not there. So you prevent harming yourself, going into anxiety, and you also prevent other person blaming and complaining and reacting. So you prevent fighting. You see, only one example. Then what happens when you empty the mind of its contents? Then, in that state of emptiness of the mind, that real nature. Do you know the parable I gave you one example? You Do you see the uh, butter in the milk? No. But when you practice yoga, you churn, you churn the milk. What happens? The butter appears in the milk. Before you don't see it. Same way. In the beginning, you don't see your real nature. Your mind questions, how can I live into that permanent state of peace and happiness? There is no way. But when you start practicing yoga, you reach to the highest state of yoga. Then what happens? In that state of the mind, your real nature reflects and you experience that permanent peace and happiness. Are you getting it? Yes. Mm -hmm. But when you don't live into that permanent state of peace and happiness, then those thoughts, you know, jumps like a frog into your mind. How it jumps? You look at a person you, you don't like and the uh, thought jumps like a frog. I hate that person. You say in your mind. And your mood changes when you are not in yoga, when you are not in permanent peace and happiness. Then what happens? That is the fourth sutra. Huh? It says that 
Oh, it says vritti. And it says the you topmost vritti sarupyam. Can you say vritti? Vritti sarupyam. Vritti sarupyam. Itaraktraha. Vritti sarupyam. Vritti sarupyam. Itaraktraha. So what happens? If you don't reach to the highest state of yoga and you don't discover your real nature, that is permanent peace and happiness, then what? And if you don't reach to that state, then what happens? It means the mind is constantly subjected by many thoughts of likes and dislikes, hate and the love, profit and the loss, huh? craving, obsession, habits, anxiety, duality and conflict. That causes the suffering in my life. Understood that part? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it means what? We should continue practicing yoga. Continue practicing yoga every day. Ten minutes of even ten minutes of meditation. Just do the relaxation practice. Practice relaxation every day, maybe a couple of times. Are you ready to do that practice? Mm -hmm. Let us do it. Sit or lie down. Close your eyes. Whatever is very comfortable to you. Eyes are closed. Why we close our eyes? Why we close our eyes? To see our true nature. It's a journey. So close your eyes. Adjust and align your body so that you are comfortable. If you are comfortable, then stop moving the body. Stop moving the body. And now we will prepare for being comfortable. Well, how do you prepare? You look at mentally. The mind looks at the neck joint. You feel the sensation. Being comfortable and steadiness. Move the mind. Let the mind look at shoulder joints and be there. Feel the sensation being comfortable and steadiness. Move the mind on the shoulder joints. Feel the sensation being comfortable and Experience the sense of steadiness. Move the mind on the entire body from the top of the head to the toes. On all the joints of the body and experience being comfortable. Comfortable. What I have to do being comfortable? Do I have to do nothing? And being care, being steady. Very good. Now we will start the first step of four step relaxation. First step. You need not to do anything with the body or even the mind. You listen, 
you become aware, you know, and you experience. That is so simple. Move the mind. The mind moves on the head and the neck. Feel the sensation and become aware. Move the mind. Mind moves on the right arm. So when it moves on the right arm, you feel, continue to feel the right arm. When you feel it, you feel the sensation and you become aware. The mind moves on the left arm. You feel sensation and awareness. You move the mind on the rib cage, sensation and awareness. Move the mind on the belly and the stomach. Feel the sensation and become aware. It is so simple a practice. You all are seekers. So the practice becomes easy. The mind moves on the right leg. Feel the sensation and become aware. Move the mind on the left leg. In the state of when your eyes are closed, your body is comfortable. You move your awareness on the left leg. You feel the sensation and you become aware. Move the mind on the entire body from the top of the head to the toes. Feel the sensation and become aware. You move the mind on the entire body. Feel the sensation and become aware. Now look at the head and the neck again. Second step. But in the second step you experience sensation and the stillness. The mind moves on the right arm. You experience sensation and the stillness. You move the mind on the left leg. Be there. Experience sensation in stillness. We can even change this. Move the mind on the right arm. Be there. Feel the sensation. And experience the stillness. Move the mind on the left arm. Be there. Feel the sensation and experience the stillness. Move the mind on the chest. Feel the sensation and experience the stillness. Move the mind on the stomach. Feel the sensation and experience the stillness. Move the mind and the entire body from the top to the toes. Feel the sensation and experience the stillness. Move the mind and the entire body. 
and experience sensation and the stillness in the body. Now we move to the third step. Look inside the head in the space. As if you're looking at the forehead and the skin, you feel the sensation and the stillness there. And then you start looking inside the head, forehead. So what do you find? You find the space. The moment you see the space inside, say in your mind, I am the peace or Shantaram. Keep looking into the space. Again you see the space inside the head or the heart. When you see the space inside the heart, you say to yourself, I'm the peace. Again you move the mind inside the heart again, looking into the space, I am the peace. Now the fourth step, looking at the breath that is going in and out. You simply know the breath that is going in and out, first point. Second point, you feel the sensation of the breath inside the nose when it goes in and comes out. Third point, let us change the third point today. When the breath goes in, count mentally in one, breath comes out, you feel it, count, out one. Go on counting the breath. Continue counting the breath. And now doing nothing.
just remain as you. And now, um, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Um, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your awareness on the right hand, your awareness on the left hand, and open your eyes slowly. We will share our experiences now. How are you? Every unmute your. Uh, I have muted it during the practice. Yes, I'm feeling good. Feeling good, happy. Mm -hmm. Relax, and you also need to unmute. Sienna. Can you? Yes, you did it. <laughs> it is too bad. I feel really relaxed. Feel really relaxed? Wonderful. So, I have already written a question on that assignment. You have the assignment. You need to complete that assignment and send it back by email or by taking a picture or whatever it is. Right? Yeah, Not is. today. Maybe once you reach there. Oh, so yeah. The daily assignment and the, the, and the questions the, on the back? Yeah, and the question, answers of the questions that I have written uh, on the assignment one. So you can send it today, okay. the evening, or tomorrow. That is all for today. Okay, okay. Thank and, you so much. Thank you. And I'm going to send you the two audio files, a link of that. You can download, you can listen to it again. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Be happy. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.